Today I want to talk about whip fishing. It's something that has been around a very long time. If we go back to the 1960s, people used to buy what they called Jap poles. They were the, the really lovely cane poles made by companies like Sourbutts, but they were supposedly rigid poles with just the, the last bit of the tip flexing. But these Jap poles were only about five meters or so and quite flexible. So people who fished for bleak would often use these fairly soft, flexible and, and fairly slim poles, but they were made of bamboo. By the time I started pole fishing in 1976, I, I bought a Shakespeare International pole, which was five point something meters, about 18 feet long. And that came with different tips. And one of the tips was what we call a flick tip. So very flexible, very thin fiberglass. And I started to do a, a bit of speed fishing. I wasn't that fast, but there were one or two waters where we found we could catch very small rud fairly quickly. And that was the setup we used. That same pole came with a different tip with a, a pole crook, for those who can remember it, that we put external elastic hanging down from the crook and fish with elastic by 1980 started to get into a situation where we were fishing uh, waters near Corf Castle for tiny little rudd and roach and it was obviously needed some sort of uh, whip for that. By then I had Garbolino SLV poles as well as the Shakespeare, the old Shakespeare one. And I think at the time I used the Shakespeare one, which were at four meters was pretty hard work, pretty heavy, but I did catch huge numbers of fish with that. But when it came to fishing shorter, obviously needed something a bit lighter and came up with a pole like this. This is a telescopic pole about three and a half meters. You take the the uh, bung out and the sections come out of here and you, just, you can just see it coming out there and it's fairly slim and fairly light there's not much room in here to do this so all telescopes up and I bought a second one of these it's it's still fiberglass and it's got a piece of rubber on the end for attaching the line and uh, I caught some huge numbers of fish on this pole and, and even one matches with it About maybe a year or two later, I also acquired this, this other pole, which is even slimmer, still fiberglass, and it's it's a, called Nissin. It's a Japanese pole, 3.43 meters. Got some writing in Japanese, and it's got an incredibly fine tip on it. Very, very, and, I, and again, it's telescopic, very, very fine. And the whole pole is very flexible much more flexible than the other one. It, it just pulls out and it's still flexing. This pole was very good for catching bleak. When you just had a line and a hook and a maggot, it would lay out the bait without a float at all. And it was good for that, but that wasn't the sort of fishing I did enough of. Um, there were people who specialized on the Lee who used, we called a grease line and, and I may well, I don't know where I bought this thing. May have bought it in Oxford in a tackle shop there. By about the mid 80s, I'd bought my first system whip, which was a Garbolino. Now a system whip would have, say, four sections of telescopic that would be about three and a half to four meters. And then after that, they had joints that you could add on. So you could take these whips up to six seven eight meters and that one was six meters i got rid of it long ago I had a very fine carbon tip now a carbon system whip it had its limitations but i i did use it in 1989 i got a really good system whip and this one i don't know if you're going to be able to read this is the Daiwa Harrier system whip six zero six meters. It's got an extra joint that takes it up to 
seven meters and it's that same format so take out the sections and you've got this these first two sections are going to be add-ons and the rest of it is a telescopic pole and the tip is quite is carbon and it's nice and flexible and then it stiffens up a bit but it's got a lovely a really super action as time has gone on these poles have been updated there was a, a connoisseur pole right back in the in, this dates to about 1989 but by the early 90s there was a connoisseur pole that weighed probably two-thirds what this does and companies like Tricast and Drennan as well as Daiwa have continued to make really good system whips. It says a lot for this pole it's 34 years old it has been hammered I've set at least one match record with it um, I've caught carp to five pounds bream over four tench to four pounds pound and a half roach I've never broken it <laughs> <laughs> so it's had a lot of hammer I've looked after the ferals I've been careful with it but it's caught up thousands of fish and it, it's so well made if you ever see one of these and it I think it cost over well over a hundred pounds in 1989 so it wasn't cheap and the best system whips now are sort of three four five hundred pounds and some of them are going up to nine or ten meters they are a fantastic tool for fishing to hand on, on rivers for dace and roach, fishing at sort of six, seven, eight meters with a, with a light float. A variation on that was that some of them, especially the sort of connoisseurs, became really good slim poles for fishing at sort of eight or nine meters. So they started to supply them with a, a hollow tip so you didn't have to just lose the solid carbon tip. They supplied them with a separate hollow tip that would take up to a sort of six or even an eight elastic. So you could have a, a really good, very, very light pole for fishing for roach. Very slim and perfect for not fishing at 13 or 16 meters, but for fishing up to sort of nine or 10 meters with a very, very light pole and reasonably stiff and of course at that range that they're not going to be floppy very very light and take in a, a sensible elastic for roach number four number five number six elastic typically so I'm going to recommend this whip or one similar are very very good and the great thing is you can take the, the four meter part of it and it's a speed whip four meters to hand you can take a section off three meters to hand you can even fish with barely the tip and uh, one and a half or two meters to hand the ultimate whips for me and there's been many versions of this were the the proper set fixed whips for speed fishing this is a brown in profile 35 which means 3.5 meters I should have three of these I've got the three and a half meter I've got the three meter and somewhere I've got a two and a half meter and I don't know where it is there's no extension joints the the bottom section here is got a, a grip section so you can hold it and these have they are telescopic very fine carbon tip and that comes out but beautiful action and for flicking out rud little rud and bleak gudgeon these were fantastic and like I say quite a few companies did really good versions of this type of whip but these were again 100% reliable brilliant and if I could find the other one I'd have a, a, a very good set of three which is what I wanted for speed fishing if one matches with this one of the most interesting wins was Barclays uh, 
Angling Association. We used to have all sorts of little league matches and matches between different areas. And someone who worked at Gloucester decided to put a little team event between those of us down in Poole in Dorset from the computer centre. So there was one in Poole, one at Gloucester, and there was one uh, or a couple up in Cheshire. So we had these fairly small matches, only about teams of six, so 18 or 24 pegs. And we fished at a venue called Burley Fields, which is somewhere near Sirencester, a little tiny still water, a couple of ponds there, full of nice roach and rudd. And there were probably carp and skimmers and stuff. Anyway, the guy who organised it, uh, I think his name was Neville, ran it and it, it was quite local to him. So he was very confident of winning. So I turned up with the same pole, three, three and a half metre pole and fished a tiny little float on the top with casters and caught lots of little roach but some good quality fish up to sort of 10 or 12 ounces and the first year I won at 21 pounds he had 19 pounds he was a bit miffed and the following year he got his revenge he had 21 pounds I had 19 pounds still all on the same method the third year and this was going back probably to the 90s Andy May, who some of you may have heard of, was working for Barclays Inn at Gadbrook Park. And he turned up for the team from up north. So Neville and I had some serious competition. And I fished the same method. And we had to beat Andy May. And Andy, instead of fishing the a whip, he fished for the same fish, but he fished a short line and a, and a pole, and he was getting a lot of roach. About halfway through the match, fishing, fishing about 18 inches deep in five foot of water, I hooked a barbel on this pole of about three, just over three pounds. Well, all I can say is a, bar, a barbel on that, and we're talking about 1.7 pound bay, a pound bay of hook length probably what I was using then a fine wire 20 with a caster it is extremely hairy you've got no elastic you've got no way of putting joints on and this thing went absolutely mental it was just whizzing around and making the float was line was making all sorts of whizzy noises and I'm hanging on for dear life and put my arm out as far as I could with the pole so as far as I go hanging on hanging on after a couple of minutes it started to tire and it came up and I got it three pound barbel and I ended up with 26 pounds and Andy May got 24 pounds so without the barbel he'd won I was a close second I never was third with about 20 pounds so um, says a lot for this poll that's the basics of whips you can still buy say expensive versions of these short whips very good you can buy the system whips that start you can still get second hand ones like if you ever see a harrier system whip and someone only wants 30 or 40 pounds snap their snap their hand off because it's a bargain or you can pay for a brand new one and you can think about an acolyte one or a tricast one or a diawa one i'm still going to recommend the diawa ones but i'm sure the others are fine and there are also lots of kids whips which may or may not be cheap carbon or fiberglass that are 10, 15, 20 pounds, three, three and a half, four meters. And they're fine, they're, they'll catch fish, but some of these are, are definitely the, the top stuff. This is the first in a very short series and the next time I'll I'll talk about the rigs, how I attach the line to the top of the uh, whip and take it from there on the, on the river bank or on the lake bank. Until then, it's goodbye for now.